Hi, my name is Nick and this is Outdoors Living. This is sort of a follow-up to my razor strop fungus video and I thought I'd do it in sort of a tabletop type forum to kind of let you see better uh, what I'm talking about. Now this is the uh, Pip2 porus betulinus, I believe is actually what it's called, Latin term or, you know, better known as the razor strop fungus. When you saw my first video, uh, you saw it hold me holding it up. Now I've uh, processed it and it's dried. Uh, essentially, this is where the, the back was, the sides, and then the front. This uh, particular fungus can be found, uh, in North America anyway, pretty much where birch is growing naturally. Uh, in appearance, it is creamy white to as it gets older more like this you can see it's kind of brown and, and cracked on top with uh, the white showing through the underside uh, you can still see some of the tubal layer here that's going to be again creamy white to you know more toothy and yellowed or brownish when it gets older uh, this is actually a curved fungus so uh, the edges tend to like curl in on the the polypore itself but when you cut it open it's always going to have that nice creamy whiteness on the inside and since uh, this is dry it's ready to go as a razor strop right now uh, of course I would you know if I had to rely on this as a primary strop I would probably uh, smooth it down some more when this is fresh, it's very spongy, almost like a closed cell camp mat or memory foam. But when it dries, it gets very hard. And it almost has like the feel of a drywall to it. Now, as far as uh, stropping goes, um, you take your, your fungus and then you just lay your knife on its bevel and then, you know, bring it back and forth until your knife is sharp. Also, I talked about this uh, as use as uh, plasters or bandages and uh, it's actually very good for that because it's uh, antimicrobial. I said antibiotic but it's actually antimicrobial which means it stops micro microbial growth. It's also uh, styptic so it stops bleeding and it is also anti-inflammatory so uh, your wound won't get all swollen but in order to cut a, uh, a plaster from this let's see if I can, you just take and uh, take like a, a piece like this and then you'd uh, apply it to your wound you know as well here let's see if I can get something better that's a little bit better I guess but uh, since this is dry and I don't really have a bleeding cut right now I'm gonna soak this in a uh, little water and it acts like a sponge it really soaks up water very well as you can see um, then you would take it and then just sort of uh, if I can get it here, apply it to your wound like so and that'll you know keep it protected when it dries. Other uses for this are uh, tinder. Although I haven't had much luck with it as a tinder, uh, there's you know in my opinion there's much better uh, tinder funguses out there to be found. And uh, of course uh, medicine is another uh, use for this. And that's uh, of course again I, I mentioned the iceman in my first video and that's probably what he used this particular fungus for is uh, medicine because if it's ingested it's a purgative and he had whipworm larvae in his gut so he was probably using it as a vermifuge to help him you know purge out the the larvae in his stomach so anyway I thought I'd uh, give you you know a better view and a better uh, 
look at the razor scrub fungus and sort of finish the video that I started. So uh, this would definitely be something that you should look for in the woods to add to your primitive kit. Anyway, this was Nick, Outdoors Living. Thanks for watching.